righty now. What's going on, man? So I'm driving, so I'll be looking back and forth. You know what I'm saying? I'm driving back from Melbourne, Florida. Seeing my son. You know, I had to just get him a car and stuff like that. So that's my introduce myself. My name is Michael Carter. I go by Drake. Slim. Pot, whatever you want to call me. I go by something. And uh, I support mental health with Power 904. The reason why I support mental health is because, one, I'm black. So somewhere down the line or through historical you know, research, you figure out that a lot of black folks are somewhat suffering from you know, some form of mental health issues, either it be past trauma or trauma, you know, that's carried on throughout history and all that good stuff, but I ain't here to talk about that. I let some experts that actually do research talk about that, but I support it because, you know, I'm, I'm 22 years uh, military, a retired, disabled veteran, um, been to five wars, uh, combats, seen a lot, been through a lot, you know, uh, lost a lot of people, and tomorrow is Memorial Day, so I will be kind of celebrating, you know, them, uh, you know, uh, they're all in a better place, man, you know what I'm saying, they're all in a better place, uh, so, you know, these are for the people I lost, man, but, you know, I'm suffering from, uh, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. And post-traumatic is, to me, is some type of trauma that has altered some form of uh, reaction that you have within yourself. One, it being, you know, memory loss or nightmares, intrusive thoughts, uh, depression, anxiety, anger. Uh, you know, it's all kinds of stuff that can tie into it. A lot of people in my book, you know, they go through, they have some type of trauma in their life. You know, whether it be, you know, sexual assault, sexual assault, domestic violence, uh, you know, just any type of trauma, man, that, that, that has changed your life in, in a way where you're unable to function the way you used to. You know, just, just normalcy in your life, man, just able to function the way you used to, you know, able to love and care for somebody the way you did before this trauma happened, you know, uh, trusting in somebody just having trust man and that's one of the biggest things is trust man who do i trust who can i talk to who can i turn to so you know i've been blown up a couple of times shot at saw saw my friends blown up you know friends getting killed i saw you know dead body of the enemy that we killed and stuff like that so you know it it affected me real big at first you know i i, I actually got it back in 2000 2000, 2001 when I was in Bosnia and you know I had probably had some form of it at a young age but never really knew because you know in the black community we really don't talk so yeah so back again man one of my battle buddies hit me up so yeah man fighting was my thing man you know I like to fight I stayed I always got in trouble man I was always getting whoopings I was a bad little kid my mama told me man you know what I'm saying? So that was always in me. Fighting was always in me. That was probably never a day I, I, I wasn't in a fight. You know what I'm saying? I would go. This is how crazy I was. I would go and start fights with group multiple people, like a group of dudes just to jump me, just to see I can, how I can handle myself. Like, real dumb, man. You know what I'm saying? I do a lot of crazy stuff, man. So, you know, uh, and again, man, I, like, I was just an angry little dude, man. Like, even when I joined the military, you know what I'm saying? Uh, people used to, if you cuss me, I was ready to fight. If if you, if you, you, you know, got buck with me, buck with me, man, I was ready to fight. Like, I was always on edge. So, you know, that was nothing. That there was nothing new. You know, that was always within me. So then, you know, I joined the military again. Like, I joined the military. Got in the military, man. Got into a lot of trouble when I first got in there. You know what I'm saying? That that was probably a form of PTSD again 
you know what I'm saying, from just me being angry at stuff. And, you know, you really don't know where the anger comes from until, like, you do stuff. So, yeah, man, so I had that, you know, effect that kind of bothered me throughout that. But then in 2000, 2001, well, before that, you know, I went to Kuwait. And then, like, 2000, 2001, when I went to uh, Bosnia, you know, we ran up on some graves with a lot of dead bodies. And that right there, man, you know, seeing seeing all these dead kids and women and men and just bodies over bodies over bodies, you know what I'm saying, just burned and all that junk right there, man, that, like, that, that embedded in my head, you know what I'm saying? But me being a soldier, man, I didn't let it affect me, you know what I'm saying? Because I got to be strong for my soldiers, you know what I'm saying? I had to be that dude, like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I got this, you know what I'm saying? So they all shot, like little young kids. They seeing stuff, they all shot, man, and it's like, wow, you know what I mean? So then, you know, living my life or whatever, you know, I was married. You know, everything was still normal but I, I can feel I was changing a little bit you know getting a, getting more out of tune with with life then then I started deploying and you know we out there on, on patrol and you know something happened we get blown up or whatnot one of your one of your soldiers or battle buddies get killed and you know this is a guy that you work with you train you mentor you know he was a kid you know, somebody's child that you promised that parent that you was going to bring this kid back. And he died on your watch. You know what I mean? So that kind of play a big role on you, man. And it kind of messes you up a little bit because, you know, with that being said, uh, you know, the, the, the soldiers, you know, they sitting there and, you know, mind it, you know, you get blown up. You know, it's, it's, it's bullets and everything still coming. So you can't ease up or nothing like that. You still got to fight even though this joker dead got to grab them, put them in the vehicle, or get them ready for a, a medevac or whatever, and stuff still, you know, rounds still coming in, and, you know, you gotta get, you gotta get to safety somewhere, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta get there, man, and, you know, uh, you know, when you see shit like that, you know, it just fucks with you, man, and then you look at it, you know, the soldiers, you know, that's their friend, that's their buddy, man, that's their guy, they know the family, they know the wife, they know the son, they know the daughters, whatever. So now you got a soldier that's breaking down, you know, because they ain't never seen no shit like that before. So when the soldiers break down, you got to man the hell up and you got to get him back on his mark. You know, you got to yell, you got to fuss, you got to cuss. Knowing it's a part of you that just got ripped out because one of your, one of your men just died, one of your soldiers guy you trained, a guy that's under your watch, just got killed. You know what I'm saying? So you, now you gotta have this straight face, man, and be like, yo, get the fuck up. Get the fuck up. Get over there and, you know what I'm saying, find the target. Kill the motherfuckers that did this. Get on your motherfucking security. Get on security. So you yelling. You yelling. You know what I'm saying? The soldier's probably looking like this nigga ain't got a heart. He just seen what happened. It's our buddy. He ain't got no heart. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I got a heart. But I couldn't I couldn't show it at that time. You know, then once we get the body out of there and heading back, it's like silence everywhere. Silence. After all that, you got to go back to the silence. Once you get inside, do the debrief. Tell everything that happened. You got to relive that moment over and over again. You gotta look in the face of the rest of the soldiers and give them a briefing. Cause we gotta go back out there. Now everybody's scared, man. A lot of us adrenaline is pumping cause we wanna go find the, the people that did the shit. So we wanna go kill them motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? But you gotta be strong, man. You gotta be lethal. And these soldiers, you know, they just like little kids, man, like your son. Just look at your son and imagine your son out there getting shot at blown up or seeing stuff like that you know what I'm saying I was a, I'm, I'm a grown ass man and I got little 19 year old 18 year old kids out there with me 20 year old kids out there with me man you know what I'm saying same age as my kids or younger than my kids and I'm just sitting there you know like damn 
I gotta look in their face and let them know, you know, this is what happens. We at war. It happens. People gonna die. You gonna lose soldiers. You might even lose a limb or a body part, something. But it's war. But I need you to always be vigilant. Never let your guard down. Don't get complacent because complacency is what's going to kill you. You got to preach that every freaking day. If you cry, dry your fucking tears. I don't have time for weak motherfuckers going out here with me. We got to handle our business and make sure this shit don't happen to nobody else. Takes a toll, man. Does a lot to you, man. So imagine seeing that every time you go out, you see dead bodies. Even if it ain't your guys. It's, it's another guy. It's another, it's another soldier. It's another American. You know what I'm saying? Then you see, I mean, you see some shit. People heads blown off. You know, we seen a body just get blown up and it just gone. Nothing. You know? So then, you know, at the same time, telling these soldiers that, and I'm trying to be strong for them jokers. I can't cry, I can't buck. I got to be that dude, man. And when all that's over, I got to go to my room. That's why I cry. That's why I pray. That's why all the suffering and everything that I seen out there and everything that happened, you know what I'm saying? But you still got to be hard, man. You can't be because you got to go back out there. You got 30 something more soldiers that you got to take back out. You got 30 more soldiers you got to take care of. You lost one. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. There's other soldiers that got to go back out there. You know? Yeah. I got a, I got a lot of trauma, man. That You know, a lot of stuff that plays over and over in my head, man. You know, I don't want to spread it with the world, man. I don't like talking about it too much, telling my, you know, my, 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 all my shit, man, but it fucks with me, you know what I'm saying? And I be cool, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm able to deal, I'm able to cope. So me being able to cope, man, I'm able to kind of put myself in a situation where I don't get in no, no shit, you know, but Damn, you know, I came back. You know, I was cool. I thought I was. You know. Again, I was still married, still had my kids, you know. I loved them, man, but you know, it made me loving me even harder, like seeing a lot of that over there. But my anger, my anger was getting the best of me, man. You know, we come back from over there, our adrenaline is still pumping. It's just rushing. Ah, we just want it. Kick in the dope, whoop some ass, you know. Shoot, kill, all that shit. It makes you tough. Real tough. And you want that. And you get back. And it ain't there. The adrenaline is gone. All that shit is gone. So now what you do? What do you do? The op tempo go from here to there. What do you do? You know what I'm saying? So now you got to readjust from that shit to this shit. And just imagine, you know, it's just like an actor jumping into a role of a character and he become that character. He's training to be this character for maybe six months to a year. He's that character. Yeah, to be a murderer or whatever. Now he been training and he did the movie and he's that character. So now when he go back to try to be normal, to be himself again, because he's been that character for a year maybe, then boom, he got to readjust. He got to get back to himself. You know what I'm saying? And some parts of that character is going to still be him because he might like that character better than he like himself. You know what I'm saying? He liked the role that he played as that character better than he liked the role as himself. So he become that character. And it changes his life. And he don't know it, but the people around him do. They notice the change. Like something ain't right with you, bruh. You ain't that same dude that left. You know, came back here all angry and mad about shit that you can't control. 
So that's how it is, man. Come back, you pissed off about shit you can't control. It's hard to control it, man. Like, for real. Like, you really, you really got to buckle down and tighten up your shoelaces. Because that shit ain't no joke. Mental health ain't no joke, man. And your mind, your mind. Your mind. God. If you can if you can pull your brain out your head and there's a dial on that sucker where you can turn it back to when you was normal and be normal for the rest of your life, everybody would do it. That'd be a great thing, man. It'll be a great thing. But then you know, like I said, I came back, man, and started drinking heavy, heavy, just to mask the pain of what I was feeling, just to mask the pain of what I saw, just to mask the pain of what I was seeing at night. I didn't even want to go to sleep. I was tired of waking up in sweats, waking up screaming, waking up yelling, twitching in the bed, man. That shit just followed me all throughout my career. You know? And then, you know, like, man, I used to kill like a bottle of Hennessy like it wasn't nothing. Drop that thing off a day, man. You know? So this is, this is a real serious issue, man, that goes on. You know, I was getting mad at my, my ex-wife for nothing. Yelling and fussing with her for no reason. And then I just leave and go get drunk. Come back in there and I'm, you know, I just wasn't that guy no more. I just wasn't that, that cool dude no more. I was an angry ass, adrenaline needing, you know, couldn't sleep at night, pill popping ass, fucked up dude. I, I, I still didn't get help. You know what I'm saying? I still didn't get help. I'm like, I'm not noticing the change. So with her and all my other people and my friends and shit, they noticing the change. It was like, y'all crazy. Ain't shit wrong with me. I'm a soldier. Been to combat. No weak ass dude. I'm out there. I'm out the wire every day. Fighting. Fighting. Every day. Come back to a country and look at me funny. Don't want to accept me. We ain't gonna get into that neither. I'm talking about mental health, which some of that death also plays a role in it. Nigga, you know what I did? You know what I've been through? You know what I've seen for this country to make sure that your ass can go to sleep at night? You know what I'm going through now for that? Got it. Some people say, oh, you volunteer for it. Even if I didn't volunteer for it. There are kids in the streets right now that's going through trauma because they seen somebody get shot or killed. Their best friend get killed in front of them. They see their mamas and daddies probably strung out on crack. Something like that. Been to prison and seen some shit. They dealing with it. There's a lot of people dealing with it. Then we wonder, how the fuck we gonna fix it? It's a lot of people in this world that has trauma. And when you walk around and you look in the faces of a lot of these people, and you wonder, like, damn, out of the 10 people you see, probably five of them are suffering with some type of trauma that you cannot imagine. And then even with the relationships, man, relationships, you know, you done lost so many people in your life. You don't want to lose this person. And then if this trauma played a role in you losing something you had that was near and dear to you, how the hell you think you're going to hold on to something else? Then, you know, I don't, I don't want nobody having a pity party on me or feel they got to be this way or be that way, you know, and think they can handle my bullshit. You know, so I choose not to even bring that into people's lives. And I know it's wrong and it's selfish of me, man, but 
I done tried it. I tried it. It didn't work. It's a hard, it's a lot of work. So in order for me to cope with it, man, or to, to cope with the bullshit, I just be alone. You know, I choose to be alone, man. I want to be in a relationship. I can be in a relationship. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be no basket case or no pity party or no shit like that, man. That's not me. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hurt nobody. I really don't, man. So a lot of times, man, a, a good coping mechanism of mine, you know, I had to... I had to get coping mechanisms. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I travel a lot. I like to travel. I got to. I get on the road and I drive. I drive. I listen to music. I drive. I'm on the road by myself. I go see my friends that I can communicate with, that I can talk to, that's been through what I've been through. And we're able to talk and have fun and enjoy each other. That's what, what helps me cope. That's what I need all the time buddies, but they know what I'm going through, they they there, so we figure out ways to help each other, we know how to help each other, you know, so if you ain't got nobody to lean on, and it's just you, you're gonna go crazy, so you gotta do something, you got to figure it out, man, we, we, we really do, and you know, the psychologist, the psychiatrists and psychologists and all them, you know, I'm not knocking their job, they do a great job at what they do. You know, and some of them have been through some trauma. That's why a lot of them became doctors, so they can help people that, you know, went through the same stuff they went through. Them the people I want to talk to. Because they understand me. You know, I can I can get I can get a lot of good tools from, you know, people that don't know or understand what I've been through. I can get some tools from them that's gonna help me out. But main person that's gonna help me is me this guy here because I got to deal with this shit on a daily basis you know I got to I got to deal with it not nobody else me man so if I can't deal with it on my own then what I'm the one going to sleep having these nightmares then when I pop the pill they make it even worse calling people at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning it sounded even worse than I did before it sounded like I'm about to kill myself or die music is my outlet besides traveling you know music is a huge outlet for me so I use that you know uh, sing scripts now that helps out a lot you know it helps out a lot um, when I'm really going through it you know I roll up a, some medical weed and smoke that you know and that calms me and put me in a, a good mindset you know and, I, and I'm okay I'm really okay with that you know so uh just got to figure it out, man. Uh, my, me and my partner, man, we started, uh, when he started the organization, uh, we talked about it, and he went through in, in Atlanta, Georgia. I started my nonprofit here, he started his in Atlanta. So, you know, uh, called his a Soldier 23 Project, you know, where you can go on. Soldiers that suffer from PTSD or suicide awareness because 23 soldiers a day was killing themselves. The numbers went up from 21, 22, to 23, and they probably higher than that. So, with that, you know, we kind of, uh, you know, we're the liaison between other organizations that can kind of help them figure out, you know, tools that they need in order to get right. You know what I'm saying? To get right. Counselors, doctors, you know, things like that. Uh, music. Music is one of the big factors that we work on because we're musicians. We're artists. So with that, you know, we figured out uh, that music is the key to the soul. 
and with it being the key to the soul, you know, kind of open up your eyes to a lot of things. It can soothe you. It can ease you. It can caress you. Shit. You use music to have sex. You use music to rejoice. You use music to relax. Shit. You use music to smoke. You use music to be happy. Music does a lot for people. You can listen to a, a, a good song and just mellow out and relax and be cool. My God. That's all you need, man. So, you know, we do that. And I have a nonprofit called Ruth, Rebuilding Unity Through Healing Hearts, which is Ruth is my grandmother's first name and my mother's middle name, so I named it after them. And basically, our mission is to take the old change it into the new we try to bring back discipline we try to bring back you know uh, we try to save our youth you know bring back the old that we was raised up on that helped us you know be the men that we are today you know because a lot of these kids have a, you know lost their weight because there's no discipline in their life there's no foundation there's nothing out here for these kids to do so they bored. So when you bored, you get in trouble. So it's like, it's probably off the topic, but it's like in a lot of black neighborhoods, well, this ain't on, it's still on topic. But a lot of black neighborhoods, you know, there are not enough resources there to help out you. You know, you ride in the black neighborhoods and all you see is black boys in the hood, pawn shops, liquor stores, and fast food, fast food restaurants. You know, a lot of fast food restaurants, corner stores, you know, in the fast food restaurants, they serve food that's killing us. You know, so all that food putting weight on us and high blood pressure and sugar, you know, diabetes and all this stuff. That's why it's in our neighborhoods because of the foods, you know, put some healthy uh, food places in our neighborhoods, you know, where you can go eat healthy, you know, force, force us to eat healthy, you know, but we've been used to eating this fast food junk because it's, it's right there. And now we like it. You know, forgot how to cook. Spend our money on nonsense. Shit like that. So, But, yeah, we try to, you know, mentor mentor the kids, man. Develop them in, into, into the great young men. Teach them a skill set. Stuff like that. So, you know, coming soon. Some stuff will be coming. Coming soon, you know, with, with that organization. You know, as well as the mental health stuff. Yeah, man. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times, this topic, man, mental health is, is it's kind of a sensitive topic, topic and a hard topic. You know, like, like, like if I try to talk to people about some of the issues that I've dealt with, you know, I, I get emotional and I start crying. You know, uh, can't get them emotions now, but because I'm not gonna go deep, but I'm going where I need to go going where I need to go but dialogue man dialogue with somebody that can relate uh, if it's sexual trauma and somebody you see them doing well and they've been through sexual trauma you know kind of get in their head you know try to try to get some knowledge from them on how to deal with it and how to cope with it and build your buddy it's just like alcohol anonymous if you go to AAA you know, they're going to give you a sponsor. And that sponsor is going to make sure that you don't relapse or a drug addict. They're going to make sure you, re you don't relapse. So when you feel like you're about to relapse and you're going into that mode, you got somebody you can call. Your name ain't Tyrone, but you got somebody you can call. So it should be like that for mental health. And it don't cost money to go to these alcoholic anonymous, alcoholic, alcoholic anonymous or a drug addiction classes it don't cost no money you know what i'm saying it's a state thing it's state funded or whatever or just a group organization that does it but it don't cost money to go in there and sit and try to get help for something you're going through you know so why should mental health cost you know doctors yeah yeah the doctors got to get paid if you're a mental health doctor but there are peer support groups 
you know what I'm saying? And there are sponsors with those peer support groups that you can reach out to. And then, then you know, a lot of people, again, they don't know that they're suffering from something. So when you see it in a person, you know, just try to talk to them and let them know, hey, man, I know there's something going on with you. And anytime you need to talk, I'm here. I'm a good listener. A lot of, you know, I'm a good listener. And I, I can read off a, a lot a lot of things that some people have said that I posted on Facebook about mental health and the situation they're going through. And a lot of them, you know, I asked today about the question about, you know, when you're suffering from depression and anxiety and being alone and all this other stuff, do you have someone you can call and talk to? You know, a lot of people say they call on God. A lot of people talk to their mothers or whatever. Some of them build a, a network of friends around them that they can communicate with. But the majority of people feel like there's no one they can talk to. Because, again, there's no one relatable. Or they feel isn't relatable. That's why you go to peer groups and you can find somebody that you can relate to. And you can have a conversation. See if y'all, you know, going through the same trauma. You know? And then... Uh, a lot of them just said, you know, they was embarrassed and they don't want to burden people with their problems and stuff like that, you know, and, and it's true, you know, a lot of people don't want to burden other people with their problems because they, again, they don't want to be looked at as a pity, pity party or, you know, I want people to feel sorry for them because I'm, I'm going through some shit. I want you to feel sorry for me. Fuck that. See, I had to learn. I had to push my pride to the side. And I had to learn, man, that damn all that. I need help for I my ass end up in prison. And then that go that go that go more trauma to my head. Shit. Cause now I'm isolated. I ain't got no freedom. I'm being told I, I gotta told when I can shit, piss, eat, sleep, or whatever. You know, I ain't been to prison, but I've been to jail before. I ain't been to prison, but I got friends that's been to prison and I see the you know, I hear the stories and stuff like that, you know, so ain't nobody dumb, you know what goes on in prison. I ain't got that time, man. I ain't, I ain't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? I got a, I got a life to live, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to be going through this trauma. Man, just to add more trauma onto my life. So I'm like, yo, fucker, just get fixed. Let's go talk to somebody. It took a long time for me to go get help. But when I got help, I was still in that joke of rebellion. I ain't nothing wrong with me. And I'm hearing stories of other, other people that wasn't as significant to me. And they stories wasn't as harsh as mine because I was in a place where but none of them combat arms. You know, they didn't see trauma, trauma. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sitting in there, you know, with this chip on my shoulder like, man, these fools ain't been through nothing. What? I ain't been through shit. And then I had to realize, bruh, that's not the only form of PTSD or trauma. People are built different. They deal with shit a certain way. They take stuff differently. So any type of trauma to somebody's brain that they can't handle is trauma. Just because they ain't been through the same junk you've been through, they been through something. And that's something that they've been through has altered their mind, their thought process, has altered all that shit. So I'm like, yo, why you sitting in here being selfish like you better than somebody else because your ass done been through more shit than everybody else in here. You ain't no better than them. They got trauma. If you been through four, five, six, seven things and They've been through something as well, probably not four, five, six, seven, but they've been through trauma. You just built a little different and probably able to handle some of it in a certain way, and they're unable to. But damn, bruh, don't knock folks for what they've been through. So it opened my eyes like a motherfucker. It opened my eyes. I had to see. I was blind, and I couldn't see. When I went and got help, man, it opened my eyes up, man, and it taught me acceptance, understanding, to 
be able to understand again that I have a problem to understand that I'm not the only one that's going through this shit of suffering from some form of trauma I ain't the only one it's a lot of people out there like this so damn bruh it took that for me to get it and when I got it I got it I was able to relax I was able to listen you know, they'll have us close our eyes and take us somewhere, you know, go to where the trauma first started. So, you know, you got to close your eyes and try to relive this shit. Only thing I used to see was darkness, blood, all kinds of shit. Mm -mm. I ain't want to close my eyes. I ain't want to see it. So now I'm in there with anger like, man, y'all kiss my ass. Then they want you to tell them the stories and all this junk. I don't know you. I don't know you. So I ain't finna sit up here and spill my guts to you. You a stranger. I'm finna get emotional in front of you. Trying to make me cry. I ain't about to cry. Got time for this shit. Oh, that was a hard nut to crack. A hard one. Once they cracked this nut, oh man, I was able to figure it out that I did have a fucking problem. Show sure did. And when I figured it out, man, it was all good in the hood. All good in the mother freaking hood. Yeah, so I figured it out. So then, you know. Since I got the help I needed and I was medically discharged from the military I get out now mind you I'm a guy that's used to I'm, I'm a guy that's used to like up tempo like I'm on the go 24 9 I'm on the go 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 I'm used to things being a certain way used to order, discipline, all that good shit. So now I'm out here. I get out. I go to see my friends. You know, as I drive to Florida. And uh, I get here and I'm, I'm on the go. I'm, I gotta keep moving. I'm steady moving. And everything starts slowing down. Shit starts changing. I'm like, yo, What's up, man? What I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do now? You know what I'm saying? I can't figure it out. But I gotta keep my body moving. I gotta. I can't stay still. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. You know what I'm saying? Everything is just slowing down and slowing down. So the op tempo now. So now I'm realizing, shit. I'm becoming a civilian. Civilian. I ain't a soldier. I'm gonna always be a soldier, but I'm not serving anymore. I'm a civilian. Yo, what I'm gonna do? Everything's slowing down. I gotta figure this shit out. And the nightmare start creeping back on me. Ah, what? I'm trying to wake up, trying to move my body. My body won't move. Back on the pills, trying to go to sleep. The pills, the pills, the pills. I'm being dependent on them. I gotta pop this. I gotta pop that. I need the pills. It's just calling me like Pookie, just calling me and calling me and calling me. And I can't turn it down because it helps. And I was like, yo, I had to look at myself in the mirror, like, bro, what you doing? You're stronger than that. Being no punk. You're stronger than that, dog. You done been through too much shit to let this defeat you. You're stronger than that, bruh. Woo. Had to get back on these two feet of mine. Had to start marching to that beat that I was used to. Yo, once I start marching, man, and start getting myself back into it. And I ain't gonna lie, you know, it ain't perfect. 
you're gonna always relapse every now and again. You can call your buddies and talk to them and say, yo, we're going through it. Or you just cut, I, you know, a lot of times I just cut people off for a while. I won't talk to you for about a couple of days or weeks maybe. You be wondering, nigga, what's wrong? Like if you ever noticed that I cut you off for a while and ain't talk to you, I'm trying to fix something. Because I'm going through it. So I got to fix it. Because that's what helps. I got to fix it. When I fix it, I'm going to be good. I'm all right. I'll be back. You know what I'm saying? It takes a part of you, man, then. You know, this coronavirus hit, you know, it made it, oh my God, corona just brought a lot of it back. But I put myself in a soldier position. I said, man, this is deployment. I got this. It ain't nothing. But it took away a lot of my coping mechanisms, things that I was doing that helped. Took it away, but I know it was just God putting me to the test, man, testing my strength. You know, appreciate it. He put me to that test God said I'm going to test you I'm going to test you I'm going to see If you can cope With different mechanisms You know what I'm saying Than the ones you was used to The ones you got accustomed to So I'm going to test you Mike And I'm going to see Oh yeah he tested me But ooh, It was a struggle And the struggle was real But I figured it out I kind of fell off a little bit You know Start stumbling Ah uh, you know, I'm falling Like, yo, I'm falling After that, man, I was just like, boom Picked myself back up And I was good You know what I'm saying? So, I, yeah, man God, he tested me, man And I appreciate him for that You know, but uh, I'm about to pop off Because, you know, I just want to say At the end, man I'm here If anybody want to talk Anybody want to talk, man, just holler at me. You know what I'm saying? Get my information I'm on Facebook, Andre Pico Train. You know what I'm saying? A-N-D-R-E-P-E-E-K-O Train, T-R-A-I-N. Reach out to Tori from Power 904. She know how to get in contact with me. You know, uh, we have to figure out ways to help one another, man. Because if we don't help each other, we can fall through the cracks. You fall through them cracks, man. Ain't no coming out of them. Ain't no coming out of them. But there is help out there. And there are people that's willing to help you and talk to you. But the first thing you have to do is accept that you do have a problem. And once you accept that you do have a problem, understand the problem. And to understand the problems that you have is either researching or just talking to people that, that's going through the same thing. Because I guarantee you, man, when you sit and talk to somebody, oh, the shit you find out, you'll be like, man, what the hell am I doing? His problem's worse than mine, and he handled it like a G. I'm sitting around here crying. Uh, no. No, 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 no. Got to figure it out. You know, so thank y'all for letting me share my semi story and kind of giving y'all a little something something and I'm driving so I got to concentrate on the road so it was just like a little something that I you know I was trying to just make sure I get my point across about mental health and if you're suffering from it please get help there are numbers to dial there are people that are out there to help you google it it's a great tool so before I step off my end was something that helped me through my deployments it was a song it was a song, you know, I'm a singer. It was a song that helped me through my deployment, so I'm going to sing this for y'all right quick. Every time I went out on the road, man, you know, I would sing this song. So let's get it. How can you forgive me when I've often gone astray? How can you Think of me when I do things my way, turning my back from you, the one who loved me first, having my own desires, renewing worldly thirst. 
told me that you loved me and I should make up my mind. I felt you so much now, but I keep wasting time feeling so very you say I can be strong I feel I've come too far You tell me to come home You love me still Now I know this is real And I am running back Standing there for me Your arms are open wide That's all I got That's all I'm going to get <laughs> But y'all have a good day And enjoy The listenings of Power 904